as one that uh, maybe they could have pulled a surprise. Well, that argument is very, very mundane. First, let us look at the submission of the chairman of INEC with respect to the issue of glitches. If your wife uh, uh, gets to the hospital for the purpose of uh, delivering a baby, and the uh, physician who is in charge of a such delivery comes up with some instrument, maybe like scissors, and then pierces through the head of the baby, and eventually brings out the brain of the baby. And then when the baby comes out, he begins to tell you that, you know, there are some glitches. That cannot just be a glitch. That is equivalent to a uh, murder. What the INEC did is cannot just be called glitches. If the law says that you must upload your result and transmit them electronically via the beavers to your IREF, and that is by law, not just by picking to or choosing what to do, and you didn't do that, that cannot be a glitch. If the law says that one needs to score to third, uh, 25, that is a, you need to score 25, which is a quarter of the vote, 25%, into third of the states and the FCT, and eventually the, the, the Labour Party is the only party that scored that 25 percent, and the PC did not. And you did not ask for proper interpretation from your lawyers to determine whether indeed the party that you declared as winner have indeed had met with the uh, a classification as very clearly stated in the constitution and you went ahead to announce a winner and you end up calling it a glitch a sample that cannot be a glitch it does appear that the chairman of INEC is in cohoot with the members of the APC perhaps in the course of interrogating this process through the judicial interrogation uh, we'll begin to see what may have transpired I hope that we'll be able to do that now on the issue of whether the Labour Party and the PDP could have gone into this race as one body that is progressing in error we are assuming that it's only two political parties that will always exist forever in Nigeria there are a whole number of youths who were not in any political party for a very long time who came into the arena because they believed that P2B was going to make a difference there are a number of other states particularly in the northern part of this country that believe that Atiku Abubakar is well positioned to be able to recover our country from the doldrums and as such also cast their ballot in that direction I can mention a number of states that were hitherto referred to as a strong good of the APC where PDP won the election. So it is mundane for anybody to assume that this vote of the PDP was split in two two. And beyond that, uh, Sambo, when you look at the result in most of those areas that um, APC claim it won, you are seeing a governor in the state who is the chief campaigner for Abola Ahmed Tinubu losing his polling unit and even losing his senatorial bid. Yet, Bola of, credibility. of the APC is still able to do well. He's still able to do well in that state. That doesn't yeah, seem but to suggest isn't that, that, that is some level of because credibility. Because if a governor that is not a credibility, it was a masterminded to make it look as if after all they lost in some places. Go and look at the senatorial result and then look at the presidential result. In the same election, these are people who are closer to those who are voting. Bola Ahmed Tinubu could not have been more popular in those states where those governors lost and then he ended up either winning or scoring very high number to close the margin. You know what they did to me? I believe that they went to the southwest and tried to ensure that they have very high numbers so that in the north where they know they were going to suffer abysmal failure, they decided to bridge the gap. Those who have claimed that the uh, results tend to have come from allocation rather than what people voted, uh, seem to be saying what looks like the truth in this election. We do hope that in the course of the legal um, issues of interrogating this uh, election and the processes, we'll be able to get to the root of the matter. It is quite so obvious are you saying that, that this is another loan. But it's quite over that Mamu Jaga did not remember that the but man who handed over to him, Atahiru Jaga, gave us an election that gave us hope in 2015. Well, uh, Charles, if, if we commence the training of master trainers on election technologies to ensure a seamless process. Beginning from tomorrow, we will commence the same training at zonal level and subsequently train all the ad hoc staff for the 176,000 846 polling units nationwide. On this note, let me once again reassure Nigerians that there is no going back on the deployment of the bimodal voter accreditation system, PIVAS, for voter accreditation. There is no going back on the transmission of results 
on the INEC result being portal, a real time on election day. There will be no incident form that enables ineligible persons to vote using other people's permanent voters' cards during elections. We are committed to ensuring that the 2023 general election is transparent and credible, reflecting the will of the Nigerian people. <laughs> the critical foundation for credible election is the voters register. You may recall that the CVR, which started on the 28th of June 2021, lasted for 13 consecutive months until its suspension on 31st July 2022. During that period, the Commission gave Nigerians regular weekly update showing the progress of the exercise nationwide, including analysis of the distribution of voters by age, occupation, gender, and disability for our planning purposes and for public information. At the end of the exercise, 12,298,944 Nigerians successfully completed the registration as new voters. All along, we have repeatedly assured Nigerians that our process of cleaning up the register is robust. After a rigorous cleaning up 